All right, hey, what's up, guys? So in this video, we're going to be taking a look at how to actually build a Raspberry Pi um, retro Pi setup. And so to start off, I'm just going to go over what you're going to need before you can even start to do it. <clears throat> so you're going to need a uh, Raspberry Pi, obviously, um, which is the main board that uh, makes this all work. Uh, is the board in there? Um, which will run you about forty bucks for the current uh, Raspberry Pi. 3 model B, which is the one that I'm running here. You can do the setup with older Raspberry Pis, but I wouldn't recommend it. Um, my cousin has a uh, Raspberry Pi 1 that's running RetroPie, and it barely can run NES games. So you're going to want to definitely go with this, because this will give you the widest variety of uh, systems that you'll be able to emulate. So... Uh, you definitely want to go with the Raspberry Pi model, model, Raspberry Pi 3 model B. Okay, and so next you're probably going to want a case for it. Um, mine just has a really simple acrylic case that goes around it just to protect it. You don't have to do this, but you probably want to. Um, I mean, the Raspberry Pi is only like a fi uh, $40 board, so you're really not... If you burn it out, it's not really that big a deal, but you might as well like spend the extra five bucks to ten dollars on protection for it. And that's all the cases go for. They're super cheap. There's a huge variety of them. You can even get uh, 3D printed ones that look like uh, NESs if you want. So um, next up, you're gonna need a micro SD card, which is not the ones that usually go in cameras, but the really tiny ones that usually you see in like cell phones. Uh, this one is actually sitting inside the Raspberry Pi uh, right there, as you can see. Um, and then you're going to need a way to actually write to that card. Um, a lot of laptops will have uh, SD card readers. There's Usually when you buy a micro SD card, it comes with an uh, adapter, so you can use it with just a standard SD slot. Um, a lot of times desktops don't have them, but if you have a digital camera, you should be able to just plug it into that and then plug it into your USB port and access it that way. Uh, it's kind of a weird workaround. And then also they make... Uh, just USB sticks that are adapters for it, for micro SD cards. Um, I have, I used to have one somewhere. I don't know where it is anymore, but they exist. So if you don't have an SD card reader, uh, those are just some ideas on how you can get it to work um, and actually access the SD card. And then next you're going to use a uh, USB thumb drive that is the same size as your micro SD card or bigger. And this is used to actually transfer the games onto the RetroPie once you have the operating system installed on there. Uh, basically, it writes files to this, and then um, uh, you fill this up, and then whatever is on this, it'll automatically copy to the SD card um, on the Raspberry Pi, which I'll go into later when um, we're actually talking about how to uh, install games on the actual system. Uh, next up, you're going to need a HDMI cable. Uh, so you can actually hook it up to your TV. Obviously, you're going to need a TV or a computer monitor or something that can take uh, HDMI signal. Or actually, you can also do it with RCA um, through this uh, audio port on here. I have seen people convert those into RCA. So um, really, you just need any type of TV. Um, for this uh, particular video, we're going to be using only HDMI. Um, next, you'll either need an Ethernet cable for this or uh, a keyboard to actually uh, access your Wi-Fi or whatever. And this is done if you want to um, upgrade uh, the number of uh, emulators on there or install like theory, like um, experimental emulators like the Sega Saturn and uh, systems like that, or like Nintendo DS and a couple other ones. So you're gonna want to, if you want to have internet access, obviously you have to <laughs> do it just like you would with anything. The Raspberry Pi 3 does have Wi-Fi. The ones that came before it don't. So um, if that's a factor, I, that's just another reason to get the Model 3. So I just get the Model 3. Uh, <clears throat> next, you'll need a 2-volt uh, micro USB power supply, which is the uh, it's the exact same thing you'll see with uh, Android phones. It's not micro USB, but it's pretty similar. And then uh, next, you'll probably want a keyboard and mouse to use with it at some point. Honestly, I haven't had to hook it up to mine yet, but um, I haven't installed i haven't uh ran wi-fi on this i've just been plugging it right into the ethernet port so i haven't done that yet but if you want to use the wi-fi you will definitely need a usb mouse and then lastly you just need a usb uh game controller so um you can use like i've been just using the xbox 360 wired because it's so compatible with computers it's what i already had um i'm pretty sure you can just connect a uh 
USB cable to a PS3 controller and uh, run it through that. Also, once this thing is set up, it does have built-in Bluetooth, so you can pair Bluetooth controllers to it. You just need to get it initially set up, and then you can uh, pair those. So that's handy to know, and that's all you really need to do it. Um, I imagine a lot of you probably already have most of those things that I mentioned. Uh, really, the main things you're going to be looking at buying that you definitely probably won't have is the Raspberry Pi board, a case for it, a micro SD card that is specific for this, and then a um, possibly a USB stick drive. But other than that, I imagine everybody has extra HDMI cables laying around these days, and if you don't have a TV, why are you building this? So, <laughs> all right. Uh, and then, I mean, you might want to order a uh, power supply specific for it. If you, like, go on Amazon, you can just type in, um, like, Retro Pi power, or power Cable or whatever, and there's plenty on there for less than 10 bucks. So... Anyways, that's what you need in order to uh, start building this thing, and then uh, let's go ahead and take a look at how you actually set everything up. Alright, now that we've acquired all of the items that we need to actually set up this Raspberry Pi, the first step will be putting the SD card in your SD card reader, and then writing the RetroPie uh, image to the SD card, and then we're going to go ahead and put it in here. And you should have a functioning Raspberry Pi once uh, you've done this, and then after that we're going to load it up with games. So let's look at how to write this image to the Raspberry Pi's SD card. Alright, so in order to get the SD card set up for the Raspberry Pi, we're going to go ahead and right click on it on the side here and hit Format. Just to make sure it is a blank format, we're going to be wanting to set it to FAT32 or EXFAT, ideally FAT32 is what you're going to want to set it as. Volume name uh, doesn't actually matter, so we're not going to mess with that. And then we'll go ahead and click Start and let it format. This obviously will remove all data from your SD card, so make sure you have anything backed up before you do this. And so that went okay, so we're going to go ahead and close the uh, formatting utility and run Win32 Disk Imager which allows you to write a disk image to uh, the SD card. So uh, sitting here on the desktop is the image of the Raspberry Pi 4.1 uh, install for the SD card. So we're going to go ahead and open it up by hitting the little blue folder, go to where the file is located, click on it, and that'll load it up. Next to that, you'll see it says device F, which means we're about to write it to the correct device. And then we'll go ahead and just hit write which will uh, load up the image file onto the SD card. This can take a little while, so we're going to go ahead and speed it up while this goes. Alright, and the write was successful, which means that the SD card is now ready to be put inside the Raspberry Pi and should boot Raspberry Pi as uh, you put it in. So upon turning on your Raspberry Pi, it should give you these splash screens after a few seconds, which lets you know it's working. After that, it's going to have you configure your controller. Um, one tip is to uh, configure it like it's a Super Nintendo controller for the buttons it gives you. Um, that way it'll be working correctly on all the emulators. So even though like the A button is on a 360 controller is where the B button is on a Super Nintendo controller, just pretend like it's like the Super Nintendo layout and everything will run fine. So now that you uh, have the controller configured, you're going to want to go ahead and insert the USB drive into the front of the Raspberry Pi and allow it to write its file system to the USB drive. Make sure to give the Raspberry Pi about 5 to 10 minutes in order to properly write all the files to the USB drive. Alright, so now that the uh, Raspberry Pi has had the time to write its files to the USB drive, you're going to end up getting this exact same setup. Uh, the only difference is mine already has ROMs and BIOS preloaded into it, but other than that, you're going to get this exact same um, 
folder layout, maybe with a few less systems than I have in here since I've added a few systems in at this point. Um, so the BIOS is um, where all your BIOS files are going to go. Uh, this would be for things like your Sega Saturn BIOS, your uh, PlayStation 1 BIOS, um, your Famicom Disk System, and all those kind of things, Saturn. Uh, one thing to keep in mind is, for instance, you see here, uh, these have very, very, very specific names that they need to be named in order to work with uh, this system because the system is going to look for this exact name in this exact folder and it doesn't write it on its own. So um, if you go to the Raspberry Pi's website, you can actually look up system by system what is the exact name that needs to be entered in order for it to work with the system. So you're going to want to go ahead and check out their website for that information. Um, I can show you this one is definitely the uh, PlayStation 1. And this should be the Famicom Disk System one, still having issues getting that one to work. And then, uh, so what you're going to do in this ROMs folder is you'll put, obviously, the ROMs for whatever system you want to play in here. And I'm not going to tell you how to get ROMs because you know how to do it. You got Google, so figure it out. Um, and then all you have to do is just drag and drop your ROM files into the proper folders and it'll load it up on your Raspberry Pi uh, pretty pretty easy. Um, I still, like I said in my first video regarding the Raspberry Pi, I still don't have all my systems working yet. I haven't figured out MAME quite yet. I haven't gotten Neo Geo working yet. And then, you know, some systems just run abysmally. For instance, Saturn and the Nintendo DS, you might as well not even install because they don't really work. Um, but if you go online, you can definitely find uh, ROM sets for all these so you can have all the games that you could ever possibly want to play. So now that you've loaded up your flash drive full of ROMs, it's time to uh, go ahead and pop the flash drive back into the uh, RetroPie and you're just going to let it sit and wait a while because what it's going to do is it's going to copy all the files that you've added in here. So basically it sets up this RetroPie folder and then the SD card on your actual RetroPie will mirror this folder, so that way uh, you... Uh, it's really easy, actually. It makes it super easy. All you don't have to do is just add it to this and then pop it back in there and give it, you know, depending on how much you're putting on, I mean, if you're adding, like, 20 gigs of PlayStation 1 games, maybe give it a half hour or so, but if you're only doing, you know, a couple of ROMs at a time, all you have to do is, uh, you know, pop it in and then uh, go ahead and restart it on the actual system. So let's go ahead and take this SD card out, pop it in the Raspberry Pi, and then we'll take a look at what to do from there. Okay, now that we've written the Retro Pi files to the SD card, we're going to go ahead and insert it inside the Raspberry Pi and boot it up. Okay, now that we've added the files to the USB drive, we probably won't see any of the games appear. These games are already here just because I've already added them on in the past. But what we're going to need to do is hit start, go to quit, go to restart emulation station, and hit yes. And what this does is it um, allows the system to refresh and see the ROMs that you've added to it. I would say probably wait, depending on how much, how many ROMs you put on the system, maybe five to ten minutes just to allow it all to transfer. It does transfer pretty quickly on mine, but if you're adding like tons of PlayStation 1 games or something like that, you're gonna to wanna to give it get that extra amount of time just to transfer like 20 gigs or more if you're doing that all at once. So now that we've restarted, every game that you put on your USB drive should be here ready to go uh, and ready to play. So that's pretty much it for uh, adding ROMs now to the system. All right, so at this point, your uh, RetroPie should pretty much be up and running completely well, and uh, you should be good to go. If uh, anyone's interested in me making some videos in the future on how to install the more uh, experimental systems onto the RetroPie, uh, please let me know in the comments, and I can totally do that. It's not hard at all. Uh, it's just a few menus away and a little bit of internet access. So, uh, Anyways, thanks for watching this tutorial. Um, if it helped you, let me know. Uh, hopefully... That made it pretty easy, and uh, you know that now know the logistics of setting up your own Raspberry Pi. So you know what? We'll catch you next time, and uh, thanks for watching.